Wait, isn't everybody at war over atheism? Atheism? No, we've learned to get rid of all the isms in our time. Yes, long ago we realized isms are great for those who are rational. But in the hands of irrational people, isms always lead to violence. Hey, everybody. Can we all just stop fucking thinking that we're going to fix things by just kind of assuaging our guilt over some particular issue that kind of touches our hearts a little bit? I know this isn't normally how I start off the episode, but this is I'm doing a little special episode. Normally, I record these the day of and send these to Daniel because I like to get a. Uh, I like to. I feel like the whole practice of um, of procrastination seems to help a little bit. At least forces me to do something. But I have a day off because uh, people will complain about other people working on a, a holy day such as today, which is this is the July Fourth uh, special Tim's Two Cents episode, um, the episode where. I will probably just bitch a lot about other things that I don't know how to change, and I'll bitch about people who don't know how to change things, but we'll see where it goes. I'm not really sure exactly. I'm just kind of, uh, I was already having a discussion already about this, so I figured I'd just continue where my head was, so I might as well record an episode. Uh, I think I think I found out the problem. I think I figured out the issue that's going to save us all. The biggest issue in the world. Um, whenever I tell you guys it, your lives will be saved. Your lives will be fixed, and you'll eventually realize everything you've been doing wrong in your life, and uh, you'll be able to live straight after that. You'll be able to live completely happily and completely without any kind of any downside to your life. You'll love everything. But before I get into all that, I want to tell you guys why I'm able to do these extra episodes, which is thanks to Chronologic. Chronologic is an Ethereum-based thing that is looking at, and it's at chronologic.network. Um, let me check that again. It probably isn't that. I know I messed it up the last episode I did. But if you're looking for an actual solution, you know, if you go to a uh, family get together this week or today. I um, mean, this this episode will probably be coming out next Monday. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, it should be coming out next Monday. That's when they normally come out. Maybe Daniel put out uh, a little bit earlier. But if you can remember back to whatever discussions you had on July 4th, if you had any, if it wasn't just blowing your hand off with fireworks, which may or may not have been illegal in the state you're in. Um, you probably heard people talking about, if anything with the government was brought up, I'm sure everybody had a different solution as to what exactly is the main problem, what needs to be fixed. But if you look at something like Chronologic or Ethereum or Bitcoin or any of these cryptocurrencies or just the push towards decentralization in general, if you want to to bring stuff closer to people if you want the people who are involved in something to be have the most control and have the most freedom and have the most the closest eye over that which a person who's involved in a contract the person who is at the whim of the contract is going to be the most concerned about it you can't expect a government state enforced legal system to care that much about every single problem that happens just because they have 300 millions of other problems that they have to also put the same amount of effort into and that's just kind of impossible if you're putting that on people if we can move those things like money and contracts into something that is decentralized and has given more power to us we're winning half the battle at least as far as i see it i'll have my own little pet issue that i bring up and i think that is how everything has become it's been put so far into the legal system and into the state that no one really has any idea what's going on anymore. We kind of all just assume that things are going to work out. And the only way they keep on doing that is we give the state more power. The state takes more power, more more uh, truthfully. Uh, but if you really want something to change, if you want stuff to be different, or even if you just don't want to support that system, get out of it. Go do something else. Use something else. Use Bitcoin. Use cash. Use anything that isn't supporting the system that you're constantly complaining about. And if you do like the government, maybe you don't like Ethereum. But they're also looking at blockchain technology to even help there. Um, but definitely check them out. It's chronologic.network. They let us do all these extra shows, including Zach's The Coin Paw, which he does every single week. 
as well as Unpopular Opinions, and um, then our flagship show, which is the You, Me, and BTC podcast. We do a live show every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and we take chats from there. If you get in the chat, I'll almost guarantee you that we'll at least give you a shout-out and probably probably say something about what you chatted to us, uh, depending on, and, and we have to kind of screen a little bit, but uh, I think we, we try to be as fair and as open as we can. Uh, but if you like having a little bit more of a direct, uh, influence right away, definitely check us out then, um, because it is a live show and it's a live chat for me. If you ever want to talk about an episode or tell give me an, give me an idea for an episode or tell me an episode sucked, you can get me at Baker's dozen 93 and, uh, you, me and BTC or at you, me and BTC as well as at Zach Vol, and you can get us all on Twitter and tell us how awesome we are or whatever you really want to tell us because we can't really stop you um but yeah as i was saying uh, i'm gonna give you the secret to everything i'm gonna give you the reason why we have so many issues the reason why people are losing their minds the reason why people turn to things like socializing things or forcing other people to live in a certain way or forcing people to live in your own kind of paradigm of whatever you decide morality is. And I'm going to give you this information. I want you to use it for the best. Like they always say, uh, with, with great power comes great responsibility. And knowledge is power, so therefore with knowledge comes responsibility. Guilt. That's what's, that's what's stopping everybody. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. You sh- that's the problem. Is It's not guilt. It's not that guilt is bad. What's the problem is is our... And I don't know if this is a, a particular facet of modern society because of how kind of closely knit together we are. At least we appear to be. Uh, like you, he, like news in Florida reaches me at about the same rate and about the same accuracy as just news of something about five miles away from me. Uh, I'm, I, I, like, I'll find out about stuff like big things that happen in the city that I live in. And I'm so, I didn't even know that that was going on because I just don't pay attention to local news. I don't look at a paper. Uh, and I would say for most people, the majority of our media consumed is either online or national programming on television. So we have a very, if not national identity, we also have an, this international, um, this international identity that we kind of hold on to and we feel like we're all just kind of tied together as people and I should feel just as bad about that person as I should feel about my family and that's kind of going like sure if you want to feel bad for them do it if you want to be concerned about someone in a country different than yours if you want to give them food if you want to give them water that's fine to feel bad about that's fine to to be bothered by that. I can, comp- I get whenever people like, I can't even, I get the sentiment. It's still annoying to hear somebody say about it, but especially someone who doesn't have to deal with any of these issues of just, I just, I just get anxiety and I, I can't deal with the idea of what's happening to people over there. And there's, there's just so many issues that need to be dealt with, but there's most of the people saying that most of the people who spout on about that are not doing anything. And that's my problem is we have this and that was still is probably now more than it it used to be when I was growing up and kind of like after the 20 years of being involved with it pretty heavily moving away from a I guess it'd be kind of like a a typical um, more conservative Christian kind of uh, middle of Pennsylvania attitude was this. The idea of redemption, the idea of wiping your sins away is very, very much enticing to people. That sounds so good and it sounds so nice to just have like, oh, well, okay, I can, I can, my history doesn't matter. My past doesn't matter. And as long as I just accept Jesus as my savior, I can wipe the slate clean. And regardless, I, I get that you can say that, no, I mean, we're people, Christians still believe that you're supposed to, uh, do good things and try to help people and glorify God through that. But the initial problem still stands that you're giving people this kind of moral out 
Um, I, I've definitely talked on here. I even did a full episode about this. And I, I used to do, when I was doing these episodes, I would normally pick like a certain ism or belief system and then um, attack it and then defend it and try to figure out what kind of works between both of them, what, what kind of nuggets of truth. But the the issue is when you give people, if you're going to, if you are going to make a stink in your life about morality, if you're going to be someone who is on the side of one of these issues and they, there's, they always have them because it's much better to have people arguing about abortion and, and tax rates and gun ownership than it is about how we have a, a, a government which has established the largest empire in history and kind of uh i mean not kind of just enriches those people at the top of it and even in the middle management of it and it's all kind of just an oligarchy and if you aren't in it then you don't get any of the benefits from it and how we've basically done nothing but export war and everything out into the world if you want to actually care about what you think is wrong or right or what you think everyone else should care is right wrong or right you can't just have this little get out of jail free card where you just go, well, I think the government should just do this. And I think that's very analogous to how I was raised in Christianity, where it's your history doesn't matter. What you've done in the past doesn't matter how much you have gone out and sacrificed your time, your money, your idea, your, your just energy as a person. It doesn't matter how much of that you've sacrificed for something. You can get rid of that kind of gnawing guilt by just believing something and that's not necessarily bad i get the want to do away with that that's what everybody hates in their life is just this idea that hey maybe i'm not the good guy here hey maybe i'm not the i'm not the the downtrodden um the, the whole thing everybody loves an underdog that's true but more more truthfully, and some truths are, are equal, but other truths are more equal or more true, uh, the people want to be the underdog. People want to be the, well, uh, I've actually had to deal with a lot of things in my life, and but I, I've, I've eventually come out of them. I've eventually, uh, I've, I've, I've persevered and I've succeeded with all of the odds against me, which is not necessarily true. If that was necessarily true, we wouldn't have this giant country that's built on exporting our labor and and uh, corporate interests kind of dictating where we send our military. If we were the underdog, if we were the true bastion of freedom and liberty and all these things, maybe we wouldn't, as a people, be so concerned with our government doing things and we, the people would do some of the things we the people in order to form or whatever union and all this bullshit that they put on paper doesn't mean anything and doesn't you can you can say till you're blue in the face how setting up a government underneath these tenants is better than not setting it up underneath and it's like yeah but the people still do have to be involved you as a person if you're going to now, I don't necessarily, I'm not going to get into an issue of where kind of good or bad comes from, because that's a pointless discussion to have, especially over a podcast with just one person. But if you're going to take the issue that there is a moral part to these arguments, and I've heard it's just, that's all most of these arguments boil down to, there's no longer anything about, and I don't know that there ever was, but there's no actual, well, Hey, let's look and see how this has worked in the past. And then maybe kind of base what we want to do from then. Maybe we should uh, take away these incentives. Maybe we should guide the incentives in a different way. Maybe we shouldn't uh, put a certain um, a certain safety net someplace because then there is no there's no danger to falling, and that will hopefully regulate a market for whatever that that is. We don't have that. We don't have. We, there, and this is just a problem with us as people. We can't really have those arguments because nobody wants to have an argument. Nobody wants to have this feeling of, well, everybody should be given the adequate amount of health care to su survive and this money should come from somewhere and then go where the, well, the money should come from you. We're just going to take it from you or we're just going to take it partly from you. And we have this issue of people being just you you can't get this assuagement of guilt 
that easily or else it means nothing. And this is the, like, that's the problem is none of these discussions are happening, especially between people like you or me or your family who very likely, I don't know, maybe there is some, some high end listeners to this, but where you're actually ever going to change anything. This is partly rooted in the idea that as voters, we actually do get a say whenever, anytime you look at voting polls, most of the people don't vote at all. So that's not a majority. It's not even a working system at this point. We're just going, yep, we're just going to do this because if we're going to be honest guys, and this is what I hate the most whenever you talk to people, whenever they go, well, I make the decision based on what they say and people should be 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 truthful to what they say and regardless of of the obstructions that come up during their job they should follow through with that and i believe that blah 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 it's but people don't do that people don't go and take the help you give them most people don't use that in a a way that at least you would look at as as actually being useful but no one who is depending on somebody else just from the simple fact of that safety net being there, that takes away the incentive to actually fix the problem that is causing you. Because we want to look at this thing and we want to look, and this goes back to our own guilt, we want to look at it as just this one issue. There's this one problem and it's that people don't have enough money or it's this one problem and it's that people don't have free college education or it's this one problem it's the teachers don't have guns or it's the one problem and uh, abortion's legal and it's always just this one if we could just fix this one thing all the rest of the world be perfect i'd be fine with it and it's like why why would you be fine with it then why would you be fine with the united states if donald trump wasn't president anymore why would you be fine with what the united states does around the world if abortion was illegal or if it was for, if Roe versus Wade was somehow given either either side of it, if Roe versus Wade was somehow given this status that it would never be able to take it away, why would you like the United States better then? Why would you like the United States better if the teachers were all just forced to have handguns so they could defend? Like, it's not a good thing. Then that's the issue. Is there's this guilt and there's we should have it. You should probably feel guilty whenever you look at yourself and you go, well, I mean, I work like a 40 hour a week job, 60 if I'm really busy. I make a decent wage. I've never had to go hungry for food. I've never had to worry about where my health care is going to come from. I've never had to. And I, I don't mean that in the sense of you not getting health care, but I mean the sense of like te- in developed worlds, we don't normally just let people die. There, There's something that helps them, whether that's private uh, donations or public things, but we've never had an actual issue in our lives. So when we look at other people actually having issues in their lives, we go, see, well, we can just fix this one thing and then they'll be just like me and then I'll never have this issue. But the problem isn't that those people don't have what you have. The problem is that you're not supposed to have that as far as if we're looking at the world as being fair and equal. There shouldn't be, if if the world is supposed to be fair and equal and if the world is supposed to be helping the downtrodden, there's no place for for wealth that wealth would constantly just be getting thrown back into helping someone who is who is worse off than you uh and that takes there i i get why people don't want to do that either i get why people just well no i made this money and so now this is mine and blah like i i get the the argument of well well, in nature, this doesn't happen. I, I like the point where people want to be like, this wealth disparity is terrible and it's awful. And we have like, they shouldn't charge certain little bits of money for these things. It's just awful the way they, they charge these things. And I said, well, why just let the people run a business. Where where else are, they, are you just going to like force them to just do something different because you don't like it because it'll make you feel better about the fact that you live in a country that is rape the world as far as what we've done to it what we've taken from other people and that's what every single empire ever has done i'm not saying i'm not i'm not someone who also just jumps on the united states well i no i am but i think i at least do it fairly because then i go yeah but britain's fucked up france is for every single country that has ever had power and the same thing with every single politician that has ever had power takes advantage of it and if you're in their camp if you're on their side if you are say if you supported 
uh, somebody in office, if we, if we break this down to politicians, instead of living in a certain country, if you were part of a, a politician and you got rich, he's probably going to give you a job. He's probably going to give you a kickback with something. That's what normally happens, is we just have corporate interests backing these guys, and they get some kickbacks. They get a little bit extra business. But the fact of you somehow getting getting what you want out of your own little pet issue, regardless of what that is, and then somehow finding it logical to feel any better about yourself and how shitty somebody's life is. Because you can take that whole, oh, well, you shouldn't feel bad for yourself because there's somebody who has it worse. Uh, they'll eat all your food because they're starving children in China or something. You can take that to as long as you want of never be happy. But you can also take it as never be sad because, or never, never even be happy because somebody has it better than you. And that's what people are going to do normally. People are normally going to go, oh, well, somebody else has it better than me. But somebody, if we're talking about being fair, if we're talking about having like a moral thing beyond just private, in like just treating people as individuals, then we can't have a country that is that is running things for people. You can't have, and I, I don't understand where... Well, we can be an empire, we can murder people across the globe, and we can destabilize countries, and we can basically run the entire market of money, and we can have a, uh, a an economy that is based almost entirely off of selling weapons and starting wars. But you know, if we if we just had free health care, I'd be I'd be okay with it. Like, wh- how cheaply, if you have morals, if you have like actual concrete morals that are not just at the whim of whatever new thing that comes in where the where the culture goes and how it's, if you have actual morals how could you ever think that that's better if that that's actually like a significant step or or even worthy of celebrating if if it, it one it's going to be based if you want that money well oh, well we got to sell a little bit more weapons maybe we need to tax some stuff a little bit more but two why is it like, it's not that big of an issue i don't give a shit if somebody in colorado can't go to high school or can't go to college i I mean i don't give a shit if somebody in colorado can't go to high school that's that's the issue most of the time whenever i i have arguments with people is they go what what, do you do you not they do the kind of the uh if you've ever looked at libertarians have you looked at the memes because that's how every single political thing is represented now is little cartoons on twitter which is showing where we're at as a people uh is the my roads argument and everybody was like well do you think like so what you think that like people should have to pay for the roads they use and like well you're already doing it uh but yeah sure let's just privatize everything it's not going to be better work somebody's going to be a piece of shit but at least i don't have <laughs> this is my way of getting rid of guilt at least then i don't have to it is not my fault it is not i'm not complicit i'm not part of whatever system you are doing because we're all individuals. I don't even care at this point if we even have the internet, if we even have any of this stuff. You can make all those arguments about, well, if we didn't have the government, if we didn't have all these things, we wouldn't have technology, we wouldn't have vaccines, we wouldn't have all this stuff. But yeah, but we also wouldn't have the new... And I've definitely made this point before, but we... we fuck, it, it doesn't matter. We wouldn't have a nuclear bomb. We wouldn't have war machines. We wouldn't... Yes, there would be war tribes and there would be warlords but they would be as big as like if and this isn't an issue of legality because i also accept the fact that technically the world is in our in anarchism the world is what i want it to be which is free there is nothing that stops you from doing whatever you want there is no law of god that as soon as you steal something you're struck down so i get that the U.S. and all these different countries do exist in a, in anarchy. It's just they're just the biggest gang, and I don't like the idea. I think if in a situation where more people look at things as, well, no, this is just a gang, and this is all kind of just a rigged game against me, and the individual was always thought of last, so I shouldn't trust most groups because they will use an individual. Because you, an individual is powerful in a group an individual by himself as far as political power or even most kinds of power is not 
strong. A, a, a deranged individual can kill far less people than a deranged individual who's also in a company of deranged individuals and has uh, funding and backing and, and they're given weapons and equipment by another uh, insane individual, or not even insane, but a, a deranged and unhinged, uh, an individual that is dedicated to his his cause is much more much more um much more threatening much more dangerous if that person has the obedience of the people around him has the obedience of other people like him or other people who at least go along with what he says he believes i don't really believe a lot of these people actually believe what they say i don't really believe a lot of what i mean some people make the argument well they do believe in them some of them are ideologues i'm sure they're ideologues but i don't think they're ideologues for what they're espousing i think they do have some kind of an ideology but i do you we'd be kind of dumb and kind of naive to not just expect them to use that and to use the very evident and very documented ability to kind of conform masses to certain kind of like brush fire, uh, brush fire, in, not incidents, but brush fire arguments and kind of get support off of like, look at Trump or look at Obama in the last couple of years where instead of like, I'm, I'm sure Obama doesn't just hate people, but him campaigning on the healthcare thing and gay marriage and legalizing marijuana had nothing to do with him actually wanting those things like it's not he has the laws don't affect these people and i don't i also this is we've this is my problem with with corporations and then even politicians they just like post pictures on twitter of them like dabbing or they use a meme and it's, everyone's like they're so cool it's like none of these people are the same thing as you Anybody who's a politician is not living the same life that you do. They don't have the same kind of feeling. They don't look at poor people in the same way. They don't look at their constituents. They don't look at their neighbors in the same way. We are just the machine that gives them power. So why don't we, instead of giving them this power, instead of giving them the ability to do all the things that they do because we're afraid of the guilt that we might feel by not trying to fight against one issue or, or fight for an issue instead of giving all our power to them why don't you as an individual go and do something about it why don't you as an individual start using bitcoin if you don't like that the government subsidizes certain things why don't you as an individual start using bitcoin or start move to canada if you don't like trump move to canada or move someplace else move someplace where the government it doesn't get your taxes. And I know that's hard because they still charge taxes on, on most of those situations, even if you do leave the country. Uh, but actually go and do something instead of like, I'm tired and the only I give myself a pass. And actually, I do need to run an ad here at some point. But uh, I give myself a pass because I'm not telling people that there's a certain way to do something. There is a one big issue. And if we could just solve that one big issue, actually, I've definitely said that on this podcast, but fuck it. I'm allowed to, if everyone else is allowed to lie, I'm allowed to lie too. I don't think that it's good to look at an issue, say, this is the one particular issue and then get mad at somebody else for just not accepting that and telling that person, well, you can't, you can't say that this isn't an issue, and it's a, we, we can't say that nothing isn't it. You, there's that's such a, a like the language of everything is so inflammatory, and people people want to look at their language, and we're kind of we're moving out of this. I think this is one good thing social media has done, where we are moving out of the kind of bullshit like politeness is good always and as long as you can say your point no matter how scathing or degrading that comment is as long as you can say it politely that makes you the better person fuck you and fuck you if you ever use in an argument an attempt to tell someone they can't think in a certain way and they can't do something they can't believe something whenever you have no basis for what you believe either you just have your own little thoughts and your own little ideas and your own your own life that has made these things important in you and no one else necessarily shares those experiences but fuck you if you want to try to work 
and and just you want to use the kind of fog of civility that we have over our lives in America where well I I don't think that it's right that we go over and murder all those people but at least be we're being respectful whenever we commit genocide a little bit but fuck you if you're like that and I mean I hope you still listen to the podcast so don't get too don't get too bothered by it definitely donate too but don't don't be doing this and I I hate it when there are people do this where they, they you're being civil where you're being civil in an attempt to kind of you try to shut someone down just as effectively as just telling them to shut the fuck up and it's annoying but uh i'm probably gonna run an ad here and then i'll think of something to finish out the episode hey guys today's show is brought to you by chronologic.network chronologic is an ethereum based project that aims to solve time related problems on the blockchain through chronologic's three core products the ethereum alarm clock debt smart contracts, and the day token minting mechanism, they solve the problems of payment scheduling, crypto loan time constraints, and unstable token launches. Find out more at chronologic.network. So yeah, so what have we learned today? Probably nothing. Um, I don't really think I've learned anything. I've just kind of, again, lost any kind of hope I had for myself or anybody really of, of attaining any kind of, um, actual guilt, or like actually getting rid of any of our guilt. Um, I'm something, if I enjoy anything in my life, it is just trying to be a killjoy and to kind of ruin people's fun on things. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I think we can take a little bit of, of positive thinking from the fact that we, or it does seem like moving in a direction where we are a little bit more empathetic as people, where we are more accepting of people, where we don't automatically, we aren't just automatically afraid of them. And as like I've, fear is the beginning of it. What are we going to take the the Star Wars thing? Hate leads to anger, and to hate and anger, and anger leads to suffering. Um, fear leads to hate. Hate, yeah. Fear is kind of the beginning of any kind of a hate. People don't just hate something because they hate it. That's a very kind of grade school interpretation of what hate is. And you're just a hateful person. No, they're afraid of something. Most people don't just hate something. And not to say that it's a good reason to to hate them, but most people, as a species, we are incredible at making up excuses for things. So there's never somebody who's like, I'm just a hateful person. I just hate this, whatever I hate. It's always fear. And I think we are moving away from where we are actually, we're afraid of something. We don't know what it is. So therefore we kind of just shun it. I just wish we wouldn't put that kind of, that kind of great advancement we have in society. And we kind of give it all over to the government to, say, yes, please, show us who we should hate and who we shouldn't. Because that's what we've done. We've gone from putting people down for little private uh, incongruities with society, and we've put putting people down for having different views and different practices. And now we do that. We just do it instead. We, we It's not even different. Like, even back where we're talking about where people really complain about discrimination – that was still mostly supported by the government. It wasn't like individual people necessarily going out. It were laws enforcing the stuff. So that's all they're doing now. And I wish we could get away from that. I wish we could keep the kind of the more openness we have and the more, the willingness to exist with people who are different with us. I wish we could keep that without then giving it right back to the government, giving it right back to our proud rulers who can figure out exactly how we need to live our lives and not kind of, I don't know if I want to say revel or at least just enjoy this bit of time where we aren't just murdering people for being different, where we aren't just f- like f- kicking our kids out of, out of our house because we're, because, because they're gay or something like that, or because they believe a certain thing or because they voted for somebody different than we liked where, People, I think we, at least in the developed world, we are seeing a drastic decrease in, in poverty, in violence, in, and then a dramatic increase in lifespan and and standard of living. That's going up across the world. And we could just enjoy that for a little bit and enjoy the kind of prosperity that has been, that is, that we've 
as I guess people, if you want to look at us as at us as all connected, that we have all contributed to, and we have all kind of built through what are mostly on the whole, on the whole. If you look around you and you you deal with your kind of daily life, the vast majority of agreements and transactions and any kind of interactions between different people are normally private or normally voluntary. And through that, we have created a world that is more open, more prosperous, more everything. And I just wish we could goddamn well appreciate that for a little bit instead of just going, well, we need, we need to focus on this new thing because as long as we fix this next thing, we're never going to fix everything. We're never going to fix everything so that your guilt goes away. The reason why that guilt is there for us is so that we continue to build stuff and we continue to do things because we go, well, why, why do I have this? And why does somebody else have this? Don't worry about that. Use your, your position in life. Use your, use your, I'll I'll use the word, uh, use your, uh, fuck. What is it? Use your, um, fuck your privilege. Use your privilege in life, whether, whatever that is, use that. To then either benefit yourself, benefit around you, put art into the world. Do like if you if you're given a life where, like in America, most of us we're not going to die. No matter what we do with our life, we're not just going to die on the street. You have to really fuck your life up to kind of end up on the street. So then, go do something you love. Be an artist. Go help other people because you don't have to worry about your next meal. You aren't living paycheck to paycheck. You aren't doing whatever that is. But use that freedom that's been given to you. Don't then focus on, well, we need to bring other things to people and enslave yourself all over again to some kind of new guilt that you have where you haven't you haven't had to worry. There we no longer have the guilt of, well, I'm not providing for my family enough. I'm not I'm not helping them with the issue. Now we're just like, well, I need to like somebody else needs to provide for all those people too. What about them? Let's just enjoy life for a little bit. Let's have some fun. Have some fun on July 4th. I know this podcast hasn't really been me just telling you to have fun, but have some fun in your life. Try to look at things in a happy way. Try to look at things in a positive way and don't always look at things as being so centered around guilt and wrongdoing and how other people have fucked things up and how we, we, well, if as long as we fix this one thing, we need to kind of just get to the point where we aren't constantly going at each other's throats as people and instead maybe focus on the people who are fucking us on a daily basis and do actually get rich off of our backs and do whatever. And let's, let's not hate each other. Let's not hate each other over little differences we have in opinions and differences we have on what should or should not be enforced. Let's go, hey, well... I can, I can, I can agree that you probably do feel strongly about this, and that it's important to you. But I can't do anything. You can't do anything. Maybe we should work until we can both do something, and then maybe we'll be enemies. But we're not even at that point right now. So let's shut the fuck up, have a little fun with each other, and try to quit sucking the state's dick. That'd be great if everybody could quit doing that, and everybody could quit thinking that this is the greatest thing that mankind has ever produced. And if it ever goes away, we're all we're all just going to fall apart and start murdering each other because that's how people act. If they aren't forced to be nice and if they aren't forced to provide charity to other people, people just die everywhere. So have a good week. I don't know when this is coming out again. Uh, love you guys. Bye.